Hey, Tennis 1301. Thanks for joining me for another video blog. Um, this time we are going to be looking at the backhand. So this is the mystery of topspin, the backhand. Uh, specifically the two-handed backhand. And again, we're going to be looking at Djokovic's two-handed backhand. Um, him and Nishikori and Annie Murray probably have the best backhands in the game right now. The best two-handed backhands. Um, so... What we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at, we're going to be using the video again, uh, slow motion video, to look at how um, Djokovic is executing his, his backhand. Uh, where is he putting his weight? Is he shifting his weight from, from his back foot to his front foot? Which foot is he? Is he stepping with first? Because I know for a lot of older players, myself included, um, Sometimes we get stuck in that old school mentality of really stepping forward into the shot, and um, and that gets us stuck. You know, we're able to maybe generate topspin, maybe generate pace, but then we're stuck. We're not able to recover um, as quickly as a Djokovic or an Andy Murray or a Nishikori or, or most of these other guys. So um, so let's let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start let's start talking let's start looking at at a uh, at Djokovic. So this is all slow motion video and. This video um, I got from YouTube, uh, from EssentialTennis.com. So if you're looking for training and stuff like that, they're a great resource. I like to look at a lot of their videos and and um, and just you know you want to look at different different resources and they're they're a good one. So let's start looking at his backhand. So when we first start out, we're gonna see we see Djokovic is kind of scrambling to his backhand side, which is exactly what we what we would do. So as he's going. As he's moving, he's already preparing to pull his back. He's already pulling his, his the, the the racket back, which is important because a lot of times what we do as amateur tennis players is we get where we're going, set our feet. And what happens then? Then we start pulling the racket back. Well, that creates that creates that makes that that takes away so much time from us. We don't even realize it, um, and then we're having to rush our shots. And a lot of times, that's what's leading to errors and everything like that so as Djokovic is moving he's moving his racket back so let's let's keep watching so before he hits the ball the first foot to land as the rackets all the way back is his left foot which would be his back foot is the first one to land and this is huge this is something that I have seen that I struggle with but I have seen so many amateur players um, especially older players struggle with because we want to step across. We want to step into that backhand, and that, while while it may be effective, it really affects your recovery. So Djokovic is stepping with his back foot and loading up that back foot, and as he comes through, he shifts that weight. This particular backhand, he doesn't shift that weight a lot, but. Look at that recovery. He's open. He's ready to move back to the middle. So this is more of a scrambling backhand, but it's still a really good example of what we should be striving to do. We're setting up for a backhand. Instead of stopping and stepping into it so much, we need to make sure we're planting with our, our back foot. Um, so let's watch, uh, let's watch some more video. So on this backhand, this is more of a, of a um, traditional backhand. So he's He's ready to uh, he's ready to hit. He's at the baseline. The ball's coming in. He sets up back foot again, and then we see him front foot. He loads up and he swings through. Knees are bent. And another thing it, here it's it's really evident is the racket just like the forehand. The racket is making a C shape. Now, granted, it's not as drastic as the forehand, uh, but if you look, you'll see that the racket is higher. And then the racket head, the racket drops below the ball. And again, when you're generating topspin, you've got to drop that racket below the ball. His knees are really bent too, which is really good. You don't always see that. Um, you don't always see that whenever pros are hitting the ball because these guys, these guys hit so many balls that I mean, you know, some of those high bounces we see, maybe it doesn't look they're bending their knees, but trust me, they're doing a lot of work to get that ball back. So he finishes the shot over his shoulder. Um, we go right into another one. So he loads up the back foot. We're going to see him shift his weight forward. He's going to hit the ball, come right through, and you see how high he finishes. That's how he's creating that top spin. And with that high finish wrapping around, 
it carries him into his next shot, so it carries him back to the middle of the court. So when we're hitting a backhand, just like when we're hitting a forehand, we need to treat it very similar in that um, as we're moving to the ball, we need to be pulling that racket back. That racket needs to start coming back before we get to the ball. If we get to the ball, it's too late. We, we, we're out of time. Um, so as we're moving to the ball, we need to be pulling that racket back, setting up, putting our weight on that back foot, and making the C shape and making sure that we follow through high through that backhand. So here we, um, we'll see one more time. Now this one, he's gonna be outstretched a little bit, but this is a great example because we struggle with this. So he plants that left foot and then he really gets down. He's able to, to hit it just simply because he's there. Now, you and I prob probably aren't going to be hitting, hitting that shot, but, um, but for Djokovic, his movement is what, what really gets him there and his, his footwork. Um, so we just need to keep that in mind. So, so what are the takeaways here? Uh, the takeaways are when we're hitting our backhand, we're trying to hit a two-handed topspin backhand. We need to, one, um, as we're moving, start pulling that racket back before we get there. Before the ball bounces, you've got to start, that racket's got to start coming back. Two, we need to plant and put our weight on our back foot because we've got to get that weight from the back foot to the front foot. That, that weight shift is what's really going to help us power that ball through the court. And three, we need to shift the weight. So you put all the weight on your back foot. Now we've got to shift it to your front foot. And then four is the follow through, a high follow through. If we do those things, if we practice those things, we will. It will definitely. You'll definitely see an improvement on your backhand. Um, now, when you start out, especially if you hit a flat backhand, it's going to take a lot of time to retrain your body, retrain your muscles, because our muscles have muscle memory. So you're going to have to retrain your muscles to move in this different way. But trust me, it's worth it. It is worth it to get out of the habit of just slicing the ball back or, or, or blocking the ball back. Um, this Hitting a, a good topspin backhand will give you an offensive position on both sides of the ball, which in tennis, as we all know, is absolutely essential. All right, so um, stay tuned. Uh, thanks for listening to this video. Um, our next video will be another uh, mystery of top, hitting topspin, um, and it'll be actually the one-handed backhand. Um, so stay tuned, and thanks for listening.